Back again with uh, Senator McCain. Uh, Senator, let's talk about this just across the region. Do you see, what do you see the impact of this? I see it uh, very unclear and unpredictable in many respects, except that I believe that the Egyptian people are educated, they're sophisticated, they are not uh, a country in, in all due respect to one like Yemen, where the, the stark contradictions uh, exist within that uh, country. So, and there were some demonstrations there today, by the way. Yes, indeed. And it, uh, again, it's not only spreading throughout the region, but it's going to spread throughout the world, in, in my view, again. Um, so I, I think the Israelis have reasons for concern. Uh, if you have a government, whatever government's going to come into power is not going to have the close relationship that they had with Mubarak. Let's just make that assumption. Then the question is, is what will be the nature of that relationship and will there be places like Gaza that are flashpoints anyway uh, that will cause uh, the likelihood or possibility of conflict. I'm very worried about Lebanon, Hezbollah taking over there. Lebanon's always been kind of the miner's canary of the Middle East and um, the Syrians obviously and the Iranians will be much more harsh if demonstrations take place in their country. And the message to the Iranians is, let your people have peaceful demonstrations and let's have uh, democracy in Iran, Syria, and other countries which are, are not only are not our friends, but are, are in many ways our enemies. Well, they're calling, uh, some of the uh, protesters are calling for demonstrations in Iran Monday, tomorrow. Yes. And already the government has told them no. Uh, and already I'm glad to see that our Vice President Biden has called for f these demonstrations to be allowed. I know that the President will too, in direct contradiction of two years ago, I'm happy to say. And uh, look, this, this, this is spreading and it's great news and it is fraught with uncertainty. But some of these things were bound to happen, number one, and number two is, it's good for everything we believe in. You've got to believe in the long run that countries that have free and open societies are going to be natural allies of ours over time. Let's uh, talk a little bit about what's going on in Washington. Uh, <laughs> okay. We got a whole new Congress here and it's certainly going to be a different kind of Congress. Uh, do you think there is the chance that uh, this Congress can get anything done. I mean, everybody's talking about spending cuts. The president's out today mm -hmm. saying he's going to be for some deep cuts, not nearly as much as the Republicans want. Uh, where does all this come down? Well, I think it's going to be a confrontation. I hope it's one that can be worked out between the president and, and Congress. And obviously the quote continuing resolution will be the first area of confrontation. Uh, there is a different environment here, though. It's not nearly what it was before the election. That gives me guarded up, room for guarded optimism. And sometime soon, some of us are going to come forward and say, look, we not only have to cut all this spending, which is 12 or 15 percent of our spending, but we're going to have to reform Social Security and Medicare, and we're going to have to take it on, and we're going to have to rely on the Ameri good sense of the American people to realize the same thing. No longer can it be the third rail of American politics. There's also <laughs> strong Pentagon letter spending. To follow. <laughs> yeah, strong, strong letter to follow. Yeah. There's also Pentagon spending. Isn't the Pentagon going to have to make some very deep cuts here? The Pentagon, uh, and I think it's, you know, this shows what a great Secretary of Defense we have. He's gotten out ahead of this, as you know, with some significant cost savings that he's already proposed. Uh, and we're going to have to f make a lot of reforms in the way we procure weapons and a lot of things like that. But at the same time, we are in two wars. We, our biggest uh, costs are personnel costs because we're an all-volunteer force. So let's recognize some of the realities of the, the, our national security needs. And I hope that some of my new colleagues on the other side of the uh, Capitol understand that We've got to be very careful with uh, cuts in defense spending. Well, uh, some of your colleagues on the other side of the Capitol are talking about $100 billion cut out of this year's budget. Now, you've been a maverick mm -hmm. a lot of your career. Uh, <laughs> do you really think that's realistic? I think a lot of it is realistic. I think a lot of fundamental changes also can be made. Uh, 
and look, they are complying with the wishes of the people that elected them. And that's what they have. They have to keep coming back to. Now, maybe they can go back and educate their viewers that all this, uh, voters that this may not be totally necessary. But right now, that's what they were told their message was when they were elected. And I, I, I applaud their courage. We'll all see right. what happens. Thank you for being with us. Thanks. Thanks.